gentle pulse of the Pacific. The welcomed waves marking time in a place where time seems endless. This is Tuvalu, 26 square kilometers of islands and atolls, tucked away, almost forgotten, in the South Pacific. But the waters that have fueled the way of life here for centuries may now be its biggest threat. Scientists warn that by the end of this century, rising global sea levels may submerge this island nation, making its 10,000 people the world's first official climate refugees. But being here, you might not know it. Tuvaluans are a happy people, and it's infectious. This is Tuvalu's prime minister. He has become the country's most vocal climate change activist, both at home and abroad. Some have suggested his people should prepare to leave. The people here don't want to leave their land. And it is immoral just to push these people to say, you can go and live in Australia or wherever, in other lands. Eh? That's not stopping climate change. It's quite beside the point. The situation is dire. We don't have to look at the statistics. We don't have to look at science or no economics or political argument. My message is very, very simple. You have to save Tuvalu in order to save the planet. Tuvalu is actually a series of islands and atolls, and I'm standing on one of the biggest ones. Behind me is a saltwater lagoon, and just a few steps away is the ocean. The land is pretty much flat and sits about a meter above sea level, making this country particularly vulnerable. Changing weather patterns aren't helping the odds of survival either. Tuvalu has suffered from three droughts in a row. In 2011, the country declared a state of emergency. Temperature is a key element uh, that if it actually changes, as it changes now, uh, by means of increasing, um, it is very possible that it is the cause of uh, these extremes that we are actually experiencing more frequently. Hilia Vave has been running the country's around-the-clock meteorological center for more than three decades. Her responsibilities include monitoring the rising tides. In the 1980s when I was starting uh, working here, it's only January and February that we can get flooded from these high tides, but not now. Uh, now we can actually uh, get flooded in other months. The water is said to have reached the top of these church steps. That hasn't fazed the faithful. Eighty-year-old Kauseli Kaisami was born and raised in Tuvalu. She says she's seen it all. She thanks God for creating the islands, but blames man for destroying them. I'm worrying about my children and my grandchildren because I don't know how this uh, problem will take long and I want to for them to be in a safe place and I tell them if something happens they must leave Tuvalu. But some say the bigger threat may not be what's happening around the islands but rather what's happening on them. Half of all Tuvaluans now live on the main island Though many rely on subsistence work, like fishing to survive, others have come looking for more structured employment. This is just one of a dozen so-called borrowed pits on the island. They were dug out 
by the Americans during World War II, the rocks from here were borrowed, hence the name to build a landing strip. As you can see, they're now mostly filled with trash. This, experts say, is the effect of population pressure. More people, more consumption. Tuvaluans import nearly everything. Export nearly nothing. Mounting rubbish, activists warn, is slowly poisoning the environment the people here so desperately rely upon. In order for us to achieve that goal of making Tuvalu the cleanest, we have to work together as a nation, as a community, as a family, in doing the right thing at the right time. Indeed, the government is trying to change behaviors. That involves reforming legislation and education, getting people to think today about tomorrow. But it also means strengthening defenses, tackling Tuvalu's disappearing shorelines. Working with Japanese scientists, researchers here are now exploring new ways to increase production of baculogypsina, or star sand. When they die, they've broken off their spine, and they are only left with their uh, cell which is means it's really hard, that, that means like they become a sand and actually they will contribute to the formation of most of the, like, the island. But that may not be enough. Tuvaluan leaders say this is a crisis, and one which extends beyond their country. This is no longer a, a jurisdictional issue, it is a cross-border humanity security issue. We have to, to really think and think outside the box. Are we the world that bad, immorally very bad, to forget about the plight of these people? It doesn't matter whether it's 10,000 or 10 million people. We have to save humanity. A recently coined slogan meant to promote the country is timeless Tuvalu. But if predictions are right, that time may be running out.